Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Cleveland Indians versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is Louis Tiant, whose record is 2-5 with a 4.02 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Steve Barber whose record is 1-2 and two with a 6.75 ERA. And so Mudcat let us down. We pulled the Mudcat out of the pen, and he gave us five innings of crappy baseball, uh, giving up five runs. And uh, that was really it. It was pretty much over by the fifth inning. Uh, we did put three runs on the board and uh, had a good showing. And, and, like, I feel even in our losses – as they're starting to mount up here in May, um, even in our losses, we seem to do just good enough to be entertaining, uh, but not good enough to win. And so we're headed down that stretch of the season where um, I, I think the <laughs> I think the I think it's I think the uh, the good days are over. <laughs> we're going to be in trouble the rest of the year. Um, so we do face uh, Louis Tia today. We're going to do a deep dive on him. Uh, he is a really interesting guy with an, a, an amazing career. I, I think the Hall of Very Good, not the Hall of Fame, uh, but, but pretty close. You could probably make an argument for him. Maybe, and maybe I'll try to do that when we, uh, we do the deep dive. Uh, okay, also, um, last night I did finish uh, all of the amateur draft. Uh, players with their cards, uh, making sure they had the right uh, main position. Um, and uh, not today, but in about maybe two weeks, we'll have a uh, amateur draft special edition where we'll go down the list of players here, see who's available. Maybe there's a couple we can highlight and talk about their careers uh, like we do the deep dive. Um, that might be fun, I think. And also, we could talk about, uh, and this is one of the things that I love about this game, is that they have uh, the, the uh, creator of the game, he throws in a bunch of schlubs that were never were, never had a baseball card, like John Yeglinski. He's a real person. He did play in the minor leagues. Um, and there's like 20 to 30 players that he's, he's added that were drafted that were not uh, major league players. Uh, quality players, but they still were, you know, maybe were drafted highly, maybe deserve a, another shot at the majors. So may, we'll um, we'll take a look at some of the highlights from those guys as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. I had four new subscribers yesterday, which is very unusual. We'll get a, sub a new subscriber every other day, every three days, maybe. But never, not never, but I can't actually remember the last time I had four in one day. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Uh, if you want to get into our contest when they pop up, um, you have to be a subscriber. So I appreciate that. Okay, we have uh, Steve Barber on the mound. His second start since coming off the IL. First start was really bad. I believe he only went three innings. We'll look at that. Uh, and our bullpen... Uh, only Jack Acker is unavailable. He went two innings, kind of had to suck it up yesterday after uh, Mudcat's bad start. And then here's our lineup versus Louis Tiant, El Tiante. Uh, it's, I mean, it's basically all of our good guys are in there today. So these are all of our regular starters. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the Indians, and then we'll take a look at Steve Barber. Batting leadoff in left field is Chuck Hinton. Batting second in center field is Jose Cardinal. Batting third in right field is Richie Scheinblum. Batting cleanup and catching is Duke Sims. Batting fifth at first base is Tony Horton. Batting sixth at third base is Max Alvis. Batting seventh at second base is Vern Fuller. Batting eighth. At shortstop is Zoilo Versalles. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Louis Tiat. Okay, let's take a look at Steve Barber. 
as I mentioned, he was injured early on, missed a month. Second start back, he's one and two with a 6.75 ERA, more walks than strikeouts. Opponents are batting 288 against him. Looking at his log, now he went four innings. He gave up eight runs, two dongs, four walks, only one strikeout. He's actually walked more than he struck out in three of his four starts. And I really expected him to be a big part of our rotation. Um, but if he's not capable of getting us, you know, six innings and not, you know, walking more than he struck out, then maybe we need to move on from him. Uh, he has a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. His sinker is his best pitch. In fact, how could you have a 92-mile-an-hour fastball and not throw a fastball? Um, he's got a sinker rated a 90, a slider that's an 82, overall an 81. The 31-year-old lefty is a free agent in 1971. Okay, let's take a look at the defense. Uh, pretty solid all the way around. Uh, I looked at our defensive per, uh, fielding percentage, and of all the people in our lineup uh, defensively, Tommy Harper is the only one who has not made an error this year. And he has the worst defensive rating of any of our players. So kudos to him. We're going to stop pointing that out because he has raised his game. This should be at like a, an 85. Okay, here's Chuck Hinton leading off against the lefty, Steve Barber. 0-2 count to Hinton and a base at the center. So things are not starting off good. I do have some special juice today. Uh, it's Gentleman Jack, Jack Daniels. I don't know if you can see that there. I have a feeling we're going to need this. This is the good stuff. Oh, tastes so good when it hits the lips. All right, Hinton on first. Here's Jose Cardinal. Hinton could be going. Um, McNerty back in there at catcher today after that terrible game yesterday. Hinton steals second. That is his 10th of the year. He's 10 for 11. Nice. In scoring position now for Jose Cardinal, 289 hitter with seven home runs. He's been batting lower in the lineup, but they guessed right today. Base hit will score a run, and it's 1-0. Will Cardinal be going? We just saw he has 11 stolen bases uh, this year. Here's Richie Scheinblum, and a base hit to right. So this game is over. Duke Sims up. We're going to play back. We'll give up the run for a double play with the catcher running here. Full count. A fly ball to center. Will that fall in? No, it'll be caught deep enough for Cardinal. No, it is not. 222 feet, and yet Cardinal was not going. Oh, wow. I must have hit the button quickly there. As Horton grounds out to third, Cardinal holds as the force was at second. So Steve Barber is one pitch away from getting out of this jam. First and third, two down. It's Max Elvis. He had the day off yesterday, I believe. And a base at the left. So there you go. It's 2 nothing, And I think it's only going to get worse. So it's another base hit. Horton holds at third. We're almost through the lineup here in the first. Zoilo Versalas had a home run yesterday. There's an infield single. It's three to nothing. And the pitcher, Tiant, he had five career home runs. Ground ball to first. So the Indians bat around in the first inning. It's three nothing. We go to the bottom half with the Pilots already down big. Leading off for the Pilots is Tommy Harper in right field. Batting second. In left field is Mike Hegan. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting fifth at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting sixth and catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting seventh at second base is Van Kelly. Batting eighth at shortstop is Don Kessinger. And batting ninth is the pitcher Steve Barber. Okay, Louis Tiant. I've got some good notes on this guy. Three-time All-Star, two-time leader uh, in ERA, four-time 20-game winner, 
He was purchased by the Indians from the Mexico City Tigers uh, back in uh, 1963. Uh, in 1968, in real life, you can see right here, he went 21 and nine with a 160 ERA, 264 strikeouts. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, of course, that was the year of the pitcher, but believe it or not, he did not win the Cy Young. That, of, of course, was uh, Danny McLean, who won 31 games that year. He also started nine more games than Louis Tiant did. Um, but Louis Tiant's war was higher. So I think you could easily make an argument that Louis Tiant deserved the Cy Young that year. But the way people voted back there with back then with wins, uh, Denny McLean was a unanimous winner. Um, so even in the year of the pitcher, Louis Tiant had the best ERA in the American League. Of course, Bob Gibson had the 112 ERA that year. Uh, he had 42 consecutive scoreless innings in 1968. And he also started the All-Star game that year. Uh, in 1969, in real life, he pitched with what most assumed to be a torn rotator cuff. He went 9-20. and 20. He almost did the opposite of what he did for Cleveland in 1968. He went 9-20, leading the uh, American League with 20 losses. He gave up 37 home runs, also the most, and he walked 129 batters which he was, you know, that was not his thing. So very clearly he was playing with an injury. The next season in 1970, uh, he uh, finally missed half the season due to injury. Um, he was traded to Minnesota for uh, Greg Nettles, among others. Ted Ulander was in there. And he pitched for Minnesota with an inju with the uh, injury. Uh, he was so in such bad shape in the offseason after that year that they just cut him loose. He was signed by Boston in 1971, played for them. Again, not <laughs> pitching with, with an undiagnosed injury, missed a great deal of the season. That offseason, Louis Tiant went home. Did he cry about it? Did he have Tommy John surgery? No, he did not. He went home and reinvented himself. He started that pitching uh, motion where he would be facing uh, second base and then let it fly. He had no more fastball. He was just a junk ball pitcher. He had four 20-win seasons after reinventing himself uh, for uh, Boston. He pitched in the World Series, of course, uh, in 1975 against Cincinnati. Um, to uh, minor success, uh, he does hold <coughs> he does hold the record for uh, 23 complete games in a season without throwing a shutout. That happened uh, when he's with Boston. I mentioned earlier he had five career home runs as a batter, and maybe his final claim to fame was uh, that he guest starred on Cheers in a fake. Sam Malone commercial that was being shot, um, uh, you know, on the episode. So uh, he also has a documentary uh, that was made by the Farrelly brothers that are, you know, famous for Dumb and Dumber. Uh, his docu uh, Louis Tian um, was the subject of the uh, documentary uh, by them. So, um, yeah, so there's some information for you. You'll see here that he's not having a very career in our sim season. He's two and five with a 4.02 ERA, 61 strikeouts in 69 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 249 against him, two complete games and a shutout. And yes, so his fastball, he would have had a fastball in the 1969 season, although he would have been injured in real life, of course. Um, but most of these pitches would not have existed. I think he was a two pitch pitcher before, <coughs> before he had to reinvent himself um, I, he, he didn't have a knuckleball back then. I don't even know if he really ever did. But anyway, so this is inaccurate um, as of the time of the, his career. Overall rated in 83, the 28-year-old righty goes to free agency in 1972. There's the defense for the Indians. A lot better starting uh, 
at the, each position than it was yesterday. Uh, only two players below average, uh, left field and first base, are the two, uh, Hinton and Horton. So, okay, here we go. Got some ground to make up here after Barber gave up six hits and three runs. Harper flying out to right center field. We're basically just going to get through this game as Hegan strikes out and Rollins grounds out. I wish I had my full bottle sitting next to me here because we're going to need it. Top of the second. Here we go. A double into the gap by Hinton to lead off the second inning. This is going to get really bad. Third double for Hinton on the year. Next up, Jose Cardinal. Ground ball to short. Kessinger holds the runner. Gets Cardinal at first. Shine Bloom base hit. That'll score a run. It's four to nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Shine Bloom went for an extra base and was thrown out by Harper. That's his second outfield assist. No other outfielder has an assist this year for us. Run does score, though. And another base hit up the middle. So, I guess Steve Barber, not good. Another hit down the line. Oh, a double. The run scores from first. It's five to nothing. And a walk. And a double into the gap into right center field. Oh, man. It is now seven to nothing. The moguling is on. Can he, they bat around twice in two innings? They do not. It's seven nothing. Eleven hits for the Indians. And uh, if you if you're someone who is rooting for this team to go right in the shitter, your wish just came true. Your shit wish just came true. Why are you wish, wishing for that? I don't know. But Johnson's on first. That's our first base hit. Here's Jerry McNerton. He had the day off as uh, Boca Bella was just absolutely horrible yesterday. Two down and Van Kelly walks. Kessinger looking for his first hit as the pilot. He pops it up and that'll do it. We are going to the third inning. Louis Tiant will lead off. We're going to put Barber back out there because... Barber would have to bat next inning, so we may as well let him pitch another inning no matter what the damage is. It, it's over anyway. It was over in the first inning, but that way we can have a reliever come in and go a couple of innings anyway. Comebacker. So, Tiant's over two today at least. And a hit to right field. 12 hits. As Hinton is, <laughs> excuse me, is already three for three, and it's the third inning. There's a walk. Ground ball to second. Two. And a double play. All right, so Barber's coming out. Seven runs on 12 hits. And two walks. Is that good? Do you get high score? Um, all right, so. Here's Don Bosch. 231 hitter. And a base hit to left. Nope. Harper striking out. Hegan. Wild pitch. Hegan strikes out for the second time. Rollins. Base hit to right. Will Bosch score? Yep. Oh, he's out at home! We sent him! <laughs> he is out. Uh, who is that? <laughs> right, Scheinblum? Yeah. Scheinblum throws him out. This game is so over. Uh, I don't even know how to... 
communicate it. Um, I guess it's Jerry Stevenson coming out of the pen. Stevenson is in his walk here, right? So he's like, don't blow my arm out before I make some money here. Duke Sims, a ground ball to first. Horton, fly ball to center. Elvis has left the building. Popping it up to second. More alcohol, please. Tommy Agee. Darren Johnson. Jerry McNerney. Oh, McNerney gets plunked. And Van Kelly goes deep. Van Kelly! Second home run of his career. He's got a power of 70, and yet he has infinity more home runs than Darren Johnson, who's got a home run pow a power of 90. He's got the power of love. Kessinger is out. We go to the top of the fifth. Vern, 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 Vern. A one up. Zorlo Versales. Line drive to center. Out number two. Louis Tiant strikes out. Bottom of the fifth. Hell yeah, Jerry Stevenson's going to bat. Oh, he made good contact. That's his first at bat of the year. One down. Harper strikes out. Keegan gets the base hit to left. Rich Rall. Fly ball to center. That'll do it. Going to the sixth. Fourth at bat for Chuck Hinton, and he strikes out. He's already three for four now. That's kind of amazing. Cardinal, comebacker. Scheinblum. Ground ball into short, and I'll do it. Bottom of the sixth inning. AG strike it out. Six Ks for Tiant. Darren Johnson. Maybe the farthest ball he's hit since he came over. 293 feet. He's a shortstop. That's what he's doing for us right now. All right. McNerney walks. Can Van Kelly go deep again? One, two, count. He does not. Stevenson coming back out. Striking him out. Three Ks for Stevenson. I guess Stevenson should get a starting job, right? Would he be as effective? Or is it the situation? We've already given up seven runs, so the game's not going to score anymore. So he's just a beneficiary of whatever the ratio is that's built into this game. Kessinger hits a high fly ball. So he's a bust. Stevenson, you did your gerb. Let's bring in Danny Walton. Pinch hitting. And a base hit to center. That's a good job by Walton. He doesn't hit righties too well. Here's Tommy Harper. Harper puts a charge into it. It's going to fall short of the wall. Mike Hegan struck out twice today already. And Hegan goes up, Otako. It's 7 to 4. That is Hegan's fourth home run of the season. Tiant over 100 pitches, as if that means anything. It clearly does not. It means he got he has 69 more pitches he can throw. 
<coughs> Rollins safe on an error. Tommy A.G. One, two count. And he strikes out. We're going to the eighth. Diego Sigi coming in. Fuller leading off. He's two for three, couple ribby. Flips it out to right field. Harper making the catch. I, I wonder which inning was it? The second inning? When every Indian had at least one hit. That was a quick... Oh, no, no. I'll say it's a pinch hit there. So they are going to take uh, El Tiante out. Russ Nagelson pinch hitting and he walks. Chuck Hinton hits a fly ball to left. Mm. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Horacio Pina. Take a look at his numbers. He's the closer. He has blown two saves. Got to finish the thought. Ah, uh, Darren Johnson popping it up. Jerry McNurtney. Maybe we'll pull the fences in next year, right? My, because of Seattle not existing beyond 1969, I can do whatever I want to the stadium. We, we are going to expand the seating to 35,000, right? Our, I mean, that's what they did do. That was the plan. If the pilots had stayed, it was going to be a 35,000 seat stadium. Um, so we're going to do that. But if I wanted to, I could... Well, I mean, it's 350. <laughs> I mean, we should push it back. Maybe that's what we should do. <coughs> I don't know. All right, ninth inning. This game's almost over, thank God. It was literally over on the first pitch of the game. Scheinblum gets the first hit. Remember, when we pulled him out, Barber, they had 12 hits. That is the first hit since the second inning. That's why this game sucks so bad. It is the worst sim on the market. And yet, I, I, I still can't. Here we go. Tony Horton. And that'll do it. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Let's wrap it up. We got Kessinger leading off. Striking out. We'll bring Wayne Comer in. Base hit up the middle. Our pinch hitters have two of our eight hits today. Harper strikes out looking, and Mike Keegan strikes out the side. That'll do it. We lose 7-4. to four. It looks like it was a close game, but it was not at any point close, except for during the pregame. And uh, it's simulating, it's thinking... It's thinking some more. I hope it doesn't go four minutes like it did last time. Thinking some more. There we go. Oh, it's a big trade offer. <laughs> All right. Cleveland. Oh, my God. Um, they are dumping their garbage right on our doorstep here. That's what they're doing. Um, th there is nobody in here that I would want other than Jack Hamilton. Let's look at Jack. Oh, did I say I wanted him? No. I like Jack Hamilton though. Cap Peterson, oh, Cappy. Um, he's not even in the majors. He's only 26 years old. And he's already washed up. Frank Baker. Nope. Maybe if it was Frank Home Run Baker. And all they want is Bob Meyer and Rick Joseph. 
I think Bob Meyer I do have, yeah, as I might trade. But Bob Meyer is so entertaining every time he pitches that I, you just never know what he's going to do. So I, I think just we're going to keep we're going to keep that the way it is. All right, let's wrap it up. Standings. We've lost three in a row. Oh, uh, by the way, keep in mind my theory. We're eight and eight now. And we were five, 15 and 12 in the month of April. So I'm sure we're going to go 12 and 15. That's the way, that's the way it works. Um, headline news. Brainiac, nothing. Couldn't even bother. And uh, we already mentioned J.R. Richard threw that no-hitter yesterday. I, should have, I forgot to mention that in the comments. Brooks Robinson has a broken knuckle. Jim Merritt of the Reds is going to miss a month. He was, wasn't having a good year anyway. And then a couple of retirements. Dave Eilers of Houston retires. And Rogelio Alvarez retires as well. All right, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy losing because you're going to get a whole spoonful of it. Um, Van Kelly, we're going to give the uh, player of the game to Van Kelly. You know why? Because he didn't strike out three times. He didn't strike out at all. He hit a home run. And he didn't strike out. So he wins it over Mike Keegan. Uh, Steve Barber. If being bad was good, this guy's great. Uh, Jerry Stevenson. Well, he probably deserves player of the game. Four innings. No hits. Four strikeouts. And then Diego Segui comes in and Segui's it up. Louis Tiant gets the win. Three and five. Whole ratio. Peña. Gets his fifth save. So that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow and uh, play the fourth game of the series. Can we be swept at home in a four-game series by the Indians? Yep.